Introduction There must be limitations to avoid unnecessary use of mobile phones, but the 48-hour ban is not good and healthy. It is possible that prohibiting phones in the classroom will encourage students to focus on their studies and pay attention during class. This rule banning students from using phones and other electronic devices in class is being adopted by many schools. It is proven that students who are more engaged in learning and avoid distractions are more likely to succeed, hence phone ban is ideal in enhancing students' performance. Use of mobile phones in educational institutions The use of handsets by learners in most institutions around the world has been rampant. Mobile phones and education are not as simple as they appear, and the answers vary significantly. In some schools, students and teachers are not allowed to use mobile phones or their use is restricted to specific areas within the building, or even outside, in some cases. Despite the 48-hour bans, phones will still be found in schools, for good or ill, and they will be used for a wide range of different purposes. Phones in schools can be used for both good and bad situation. However, prohibiting the use of cell phones has negative consequences as well. Students and their parents or guardians communicate via these devices. Students converse with their parents when they need something or if they have forgotten something at home and need to get it back. Additionally, parents converse with their children while in school to keep labels on how they are doing and let them know when to head home. 48-hour ban is not good is because the parent can teach their children in an emergency using cell phones. Whether a child attends a private or public school, families encounter unprecedented times. People are currently during in a pandemic era whereby different institutions such as school districts and families are constantly anxious about their children's health and safety. It is more important than ever to know that they can get in touch with loved ones quickly thanks to cell phones while at school. The students in an emergency can contact the authorities or a medical facility. Many parents have concerns about the children's activities after school, including everything from harassment to violence to the possibility of car accidents. Students go to sporting events and spend time with their friends for those 48 hours. Even though parents might not like the idea of their children having cell phones in school, they might wish them to be able to use them in the immediate aftermath of their time in school. Educators and experts emphasize the importance of learning how to effectively use cell phones as a life skill and educational tool. Many school principals believe that students should be taught to use mobile phones responsibly. Cell phones should be turned off during class or study time and used only when necessary. As a result, students who use their handset during class or taking notes will be docked points, but the devices themselves are not prohibited. This policy aims to provide students with a safe environment to practice self-control over their phone use before entering adulthood. There was a time when mobile phones did not exist, but now they do. The kids can be easily contacted via their handsets, whether they want to ask a question or change their plan. Many acute anxiety students deal with the condition by regularly checking in with the caretakers concerning the daily plan. For instance, a student suffering from anxiety might repeatedly use text, who is picking me up? During a typical school day. It is not because they are forgetful, but they find it comforting to repeat their daily routine. Smartphones are getting more powerful and more affordable. The computing power in today's smartphone surpasses NASA's computers in the days leading up to the first human crewed mission to the moon. This iPhone CPU contains 625 times more effective transistors than the 1995 Pentium processor. It is also true that smartphones now account for half of all new phone purchases in various countries, and it is expected that smartphones will be 75% of the market for mobile phones. In the future, it will be difficult to deny the relevance of imposing the 48-hour ban on all fifth-year scholars. There are various ways to guide people on how to use their handsets. General guidelines on the proper use of phones are available on the websites of education and culture ministries. They can advocate for or oppose legislation that originates in or is not enforced by other government agencies. 
It is possible to delegate authority for issuing such prohibitions or directives to lower-level educational authorities, such as school principals or even individual teachers, to facilitate the implementation of such measures at the local level. Using mobile phones in school, especially during class time, provides students with practical applications and tools to aid their academic endeavors. Consider the mobile dictionary, for example. A small percentage of students is leaving behind dictionary books. It is a hassle for them, and it is another thing they have to drag around to school. They prefer online dictionaries because they can be used offline, and in just a few seconds, they can find the word they are looking for. These are just a few of the many benefits of students having access to their mobile phones in the classroom. In light of this, the above scenario is incorrect. The goal of a 48-hour cell phone ban is admirable, but the policy itself is unhealthy. So instead of banning cell phones for a few days, the school's administration should restrict first-year students from using them to reach out to their friends. Since the orientation is a two-day event, there may be messages and calls from the parents of students, or there may be emergencies. Conclusion To conclude, First-year students should not be subject to a 48-hour phone ban as part of their initiative. However, the goal of making and gaining friends on campus is a good one, but there may be negative consequences. This paper recommends that the school administration should come up with a new way for new students to make friends, get to know the campus, and have a group of acquaintances that will be mutually beneficial. It is up to the individual families to figure out what works best for them. Because of this, every situation is unique as far as a society is concerned, digital devices are here to stay. Increasing cell phone use and loosening rules is easier than limiting it, which may be something to keep in mind as one deals with the challenges of using handsets in schools. This and many other essays are available at studycorgi.com.